the platonic solids, the five classical shapes that are the basis of every shape and form and structure that we have known in the universe at all levels, supermassive, super small and everything in between. The tetrahedron, the octahedron, the cube, the icosahedron and the dodecahedron. The question was, how are they made? I've got these from a piece of software that comes with my package for Rhino 3D. And I can push a button and say, I want a dodecahedron. Or push a button, I want an icosahedron, or octahedron. But the question for me was, how are these shapes made in the first place? How are they understood? And so, because of my studies in ancient architecture, I reverted to older ways of thinking about this question that is with a, a, a straight edge a ruler and a, uh, an arc compass and line so at first I looked at the platonic solids and noticed that they were transparent in their they're not solid it's easier to understand them but then on further research noticed first of all we have the drawings of, I think that's Kepler, yeah, and the Greeks in their relationship to fire, air, earth and water. And then I came across this which is the jewel. The jewel of the cube is the octahedron. It's reflected inside by connecting the center points. The tetrahedron is by connecting the end points of the cube and you get the tetrahedron. And then realizing that the golden section triplicated in three directions, the cardinal directions, up, down, forward, backwards, left, right, would create the icosahedron. I was looking at this at the same time as I was considering about cymatics, where vibration, sound, makes shape and form. We understand it well, we, we don't fully understand it, but we, we recognize it from the flat patterns that we see playing here. Here's a note played on a piano in the cymoscope. And so seeing these patterns, these symmetrical shapes, these geometric forms, pairing that together with what is known as the jewels, the reflection that is known in the platonic solids. I ask the question, can this be drawn in on the computer? So I started with the most basic of shapes, a line doesn't matter what length it is because it defines itself. I'll copy this. Copy it and paste. Go to the top view and rotate it just to make the cube. And so it's using the same techniques as those before us our forebears who would work with a, a compass and a ruler, the arc and the line. Join those and give them a center point. Group that. Okay, now I'm going to copy this, make our standard pattern the cube. Save that. I'm going to perspective view. Let's highlight that so I get this. Actually, I'm just going to move this a bit away from our other ones and get slightly confused. 
and so I just fold this into position. The software that I'm using is Rhino 5, which is 3D software. Um, it's, I think it's one of the most popular ones. Um, and once you get this, the, the basic tools, this doesn't use any complicated calculations, it just uses the basic tools to construct all of this. And so I, you start with the cube with the, the question of cymatics. Are center points in place ready to reflect and connect and make the the octahedron? Let's make the octahedron since that's the first one. And it's center point. Point. There's no calculation. Everything is from end point to center point to midpoint. Nothing else is required in the whole of this system of this, these holographic constructions. Now with this I'm going to repeat this four times. It just puts in the top view and you can see that to repeat that four times four enter and there we have our octahedron the same as our octahedron there so from that I make the tetrahedron from the endpoints And this is how the whole system was developed from these simple principles with the computer that does it 100% accurately every time. Endpoint to endpoint. If I was clever, I'd be able to push, you know, uh, be able to mirror them, but I always get confused with the direction of this. So, there we have our tetrahedron. Let's get it back in position. If you're wondering, I'm using a space mouse. This is the standard control here for Rhino. And you can do it and move it around like this. But I've got myself a space mouse and it allows me to move in a much more meaningful, purposeful way in relation to the octahedron. See how it's nestled inside of there. And that's the basis to the holographic understanding which is a reflection.